Abbas is nice interviewing Rabbi Chaim Miller, the editor in chief of Kol Menachem. He is about to publish the new Megillah, and we'd like to interview him on it. There have been hundreds of commentaries written on the Megillah. What does this book offer that has not that is not already available? Well, one thing that I think is really lacking in English Judaica is personalized commentary. In other words, you pick up the book, it's very easy to find books that uh, beautifully adapt the classic commentaries, but it's always f hard to find that take-home message, um, the vart which is going to really change a day in your life or give you some insight how to live a different way. So what I really try to do, and I think um, it's the stress of the book, is make a personalized, very intimate, very meaningful uh, commentary that, you know, you want to read it, you want to read more of it because it's just, it's addressing the issues in your life, it's relevant. Relevancy is the key. What about the story of Purim entice you to write this book over, let's say, many, many other hundreds of books? Well, I always love the Megillah because it's the diaspora story. It's the story of Jews as we find ourselves today in a host culture which is alien to Judaism. They're in exile, they're in Golis. Um, they are answerable to the government of the times. Um, the Jews are not so pious in the Megillah story. They eat in the feast of Achashverosh. Uh, they're secularized to some extent. So it very much speaks to uh, the challenges that we face as Jews living in, I thank God we live in America, which is a very uh, warm and hospitable host culture, but it, it's not a Jewish culture. This is not Geula, this is not redemption. And uh, really the Megillah presents the challenges of our day to be a religious Jew, proud, uh, but um, living in society. The Sefer looks, I must say, quite beautiful. Thank you. What inspired you to this design and this layout? Um, to note that the previous Sefer, the Haggadah, received the Benjamin Franklin Award for its layout and design. Um, thank you. Um, I think design is very important. They, they always say don't judge a book by its cover, but we all do. We, we pick up a book in the store because it looks beautiful. So we put a lot of money into this. This is heavily subsidized so we can bring the price down. Uh, this is a handmade cover. Uh, I've actually seen them do it. For every cover that they make they get right, they mess up about three because the stamping is very, very difficult on this soft material. This is a kind of um, synthetic leather type material. Uh, it's soft to the touch and um, it's very enjoyable to use. But the main part of the design is really inside. I don't know if you can see it on the camera here, but we have a three color print, gold. Uh, obviously the ink is black, very rich cream paper, and the um, highlights in red, uh, which make it very beautiful. And um, also the typography that we use. These are the latest fonts. They've been specially designed for um, Hebrew books. And the, f the font technology now is phenomenal. The positioning of the uh, cantillation notes and uh, the whole layout. I don't know if you can see here, but some of the letters are stretched to fill the, the paragraph. Um, this is something we put a lot of time and energy into. And um, as you mentioned, Levy, uh, with God's help, we actually won an award last year for the Haggadah. The Kolmanach Haggadah looks exactly the same. I think I have one here. Uh, the Benjamin Franklin Award, which is a non-Jewish award. In other words, we were competing with books published across the entire United States. And um, we uh, won the best inside design for a um, two-color print, which was a um, great privilege, beating books published, uh, dummies books, and uh, other mainstream books. So it was a great Kiddush Hashem. And the Megillah is designed by the same person. It's uh, following a very similar uh, layout. So... It's really a feast to use, a feast for the eyes. Your work is fascinating, and we would like to know what is the Mefurish Taras Menachem? What do they do? Why are they here? And what do they what do they give to the Jewish world? Well, that's a good question. Our main emphasis here in Kol Menachem is to spread the teachings of the late Lubavitcher Rabbi Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, uh, who was a towering figure. Uh, in 20th century Judaism, but what he's less known for is his brilliant, brilliant Torah insights. Uh, there's over a hundred volumes of his lectures, 
his sermons, uh, which were delivered informally. Uh, and he was really a very, very brilliant mind. And, and he understood the mentality that we have uh, nowadays, the modern mindset. And uh, he understood how to communicate Torah in a very, very intellectually deep way, and yet in a very, very traditional way, bridging those two worlds together. So what I try to do is uh, go through this material. It's voluminous. There are, there are literally tens of thousands of pages uh, of this material. And uh, it's very hard to adapt because the Rebbe was a great genius and uh, he didn't make any effort really to simplify his ideas, to popularize them, to make them accessible to the layman. Um, and that's really what I try to do. I try to um, say it in my own voice and um, in my own words. These are, it's not a direct translation of, of the Rebbe's insights, but um, uh, in a way that people can relate to, in a way that's readable. And um, you really get the message. And, and really what this book is, I mean, it's not really just for the Lubavitch community. It, it's for anyone who's interested in Torah, anyone who really loves Torah, uh, and uh, wants to see what a very great mind has to, ha has to say about the Megillah. Uh, a lot of people have heard of the Rebbe because of his great achievement in outreach and in founding Chabad houses all over the world, his meeting with Torah scholars and, and you know, politicians of the day. But his Torah works, which really his life, he lived for Torah and he studied Torah day and night. Uh, his, his Torah works are less known uh, than those achievements. And that's really the, the balance we're trying to redress here in Kol Menachem to, to, to make his Torah ideas accessible to a wider audience. Talking about the Lubavitcher Rebbe, is this the first book ever to complete all the Rebbe's talks into one Sefer? It's the first book in English. Well, it doesn't inc incorporate all the Rebbe's talks. The Rebbe spoke every Purim for about six hours, uh, for around almost 40 years, so there's no way we can <laughs> include that amount of material. But it is the first comprehensive uh, running commentary on the Megillah in English. There have been attempts uh, in Hebrew to uh, gather the material together. Th three or four volumes exist of um, Torah insights in the Megillah. But they don't bridge the gap between the, the, the mindset of the reader and the original format they were delivered. Remember, the Rebbe speaking to thousands of people, they're basically all his chassidim, they're all insiders, and they all understand the, what his thought patterns, they understand the delivery. That's a very different context to an English book, which is written for really anyone to pick up. And um, you, you don't have five hours to read one insight. You need to get it simply, you need to get it clearly. So there's a tremendous bridge of adaptation, which I must say I tremble every day when I think of the responsibility of, of conveying his words uh, uh, authentically. But uh, thank God they've been well received and, and, and people, the public has um, accepted this as some sort of authentic rendition of, of the Rebbe's ideas, and, and, which is a very humbling thought, uh, but a very gratifying one. You mentioned earlier that these, that this safer, this book is accessible to everyone. Does that include people with little or no Jewish knowledge and background? Yes, it does. Um, I am 100% confident that this book is accessible to, to total beginners. But at the same time, I, I try and write for a very broad audience. I think Torah scholars would appreciate this book because it has very fascinating, very rich, very deep insights. And it's been a tremendous challenge to write in a way that uh, doesn't insult the intelligence of a Torah scholar, and yet at the same time is accessible to, to, to the beginner. And it, it's almost an impossible task. But, you know, I'll tell you, there's a famous story about a Hasidic Rebbe who had Two, he, he said, I have written in my two pockets two different statements. In one pocket is, it says, Anoichi of Eifa, I am just dust and earth. And the other pocket it says, Bishvili Nivra Eilam, that the world was created for my sake. And he was always juggling b between the two. In, a, in adaptation, there's a tremendous juggle. Um, you want to convey the power and intellectual might of the original and the depth of the sources of a great Torah scholar, but on the other hand you want it to be popular. So I'm always juggling with these two things. Make it popular, make it readable, make it accessible. On the other hand, preserve the depth, preserve the integrity, and, and uh, thank God I think you know, we've achieved some success in that area. Um, you, most of your viewers watching this will be watching it from Vasas Nias. 
which isn't a Lubavitch website, do you feel that your safer can apply to them also, or is it a exclusively Lubavitch safer? No, absolutely. The, the, the Kol Menachem series is not for, written specifically for Lubavitch audience. In fact, almost half our sales come from outside Lubavitch world. It's, it's available in Judaica stores across the country, and uh, it's very, the whole series, we have a series of books, and they're very popular uh, amongst a broad variety of Jews. And uh, that's because, really, they're written for anyone who loves Torah. If you love Torah and you love the intellectual stimulation of Torah and you want to s read it, uh, an authentic, contemporary interpretation that rings home uh, and uh, that has power to it, then you'll enjoy this book. It doesn't matter what your affiliation or, or, or prior background. When I open this book, I see that there's a section called The Classic Questions. What does that mean, Classic Questions? Classic Questions for who, for from who? Well, what we try to do, this, this is across the whole series. Um, if you can see there, we have here classic questions, um, which are, you know, when you, Jews always learn by asking questions. They're, cl they're, they're obvious questions that you want to ask when you're reading the Megillah. Uh, and then we have a, a variety of commentaries. Here we have the Raal Bag, one of the Rishonim. We have the Megillah Storm, which is the commentary of the Nesivus and Mishpat. On the Megillah, we have the Mayam Lois. So I tried to collect from uh, about 50 to 100 different uh, sources, obviously starting with the Gemara, the Midrashim, which are very, very rich in the Megillah, um, Rishonim, Achreinim, the early and later commentaries. Uh, so you, it, it's not just, um, obviously the main part here is the Torah's Menachem, which is the, the Rebbe's ideas. But it's, uh, you want, the Rebbe always wanted his ideas to be viewed in the context of other thinkers. It's not just Lubavitch in its own orbit. It's, uh, so, so you get uh, a, a very basic rudimentary understanding of the classical commentaries, and then layer upon layer, uh, the Rebbe's commentary. Your book seems fascinating, and, and this ever-growing library that you are creating. What other books have you already written that we may indulge ourselves in? Well, very quickly, because I know we're running out of time. I mentioned the Haggadah before. Um, we have, of course, the Kutnik Chumash, which um, is, uh, thank God, very, very popular. Uh, also has the classic questions in Teres Menachem, uh, found all over the Jewish world, which has also now been made available in Hebrew, the Levive edition. And um, uh, another book we have, very briefly, is a commentary on the Rambam's 13 Principles of Faith. This is a series of lessons uh, analyzing the views of Roshanim, Achreinim, uh, all thinkers, including the Rebbe, on the basic principles of faith. So we have one volume on principles. It's an ongoing series, Principles 8 and 9, the Torah. And we have another volume on Principles 6 and 7, which is prophecy. Thank you very much, Rabbi Chaim. Now, as one last question is, where, when can we see some of your talks? As you seem to have written so many beautiful books, you probably have some very interesting shirim to offer also. Well, you can come to my classes here in Crown Heights or on the internet. We have every week now uh, a 10 minute video cast, Torah in 10, which is you can find it at torahin10.com. Uh, insights on the Parsha. And um, thank you very much, Levi, for your time. Thank you very much, Rabbi Chaim.